All right, Khan, Shalom, Shalom, Israel, Shalom to the Torah, Shaz, Yasha, Allah, giving the course, Allah, and the glory, praise unto the Most High God, Yahweh. And the name is only God, Son, Yahweh, Shah, this brother, Yasha, Allah, coming back, Shah, yet another video through the Spirit Power, Yahweh, Bashem, Hamashiach, Wamalak, Yahweh, Shah, all right, Shalom, Shalom to the Torah. All right, so I'm going to get um straight into this through the Spirit. So this be uh, basically going into the Most High is incomprehensible, and nobody can understand the Most High, all right? We as men upon earth, we can never understand the Most High because he is far beyond, you know, our comprehension. Because even think about it like this, right? You might have uh, certain dreams that don't make any sense at all. And you're wondering why, like in, in, in the dream, things don't make sense. Time feels longer. You feel pain in your dream, right? All of these things you're not feeling in real life. You can't breathe in your dream. Maybe you're drowning. Maybe you're falling. You're feeling these things in, in your dream. But you're literally just on your bed. In reality, you're, you're just on your bed. Snoring. But in that dream, you feel like you're really there. You feel like you're, you know, running, really running away from the police. Or you're really running away from that dark figure. Right? That you can't really discern what, what that is. So we can't even understand our dream. So how much more the most high God who made that dream, who sent you that dream? How can we even begin to comprehend him when we can't even comprehend our dreams sometimes? You know, me personally, I have a lot of weird dreams. It don't make any sense. I don't know. Like, it don't make any sense. Right. And I can't seem to break it down. And so if I can't even understand that, who am I to understand the most high? We have to understand the Most High is called the Ancient of Days. Let's kick it off with that precept. It's the book of uh, Daniel. This is uh, Daniel, chapter seven. This is Daniel chapter seven, right? And verse number nine. It says, "I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit." Who's the Ancient of Days? Who's before time? The Most High God, Yahweh, right? Yahweh, you understand? He's the one that's before time. And so we see here, right here, or we see in this verse, that what? It says the ancient of days is it. So he's before time. So if the Most High is before time, picture that. We can't even picture anything before time, right? We can't picture that. Everything in our life has time, has a beginning and an end. The Mosai never had a beginning and he never had an end. You can't even wrap your mind around that. How can something not have a beginning? Right? Everything in our life has a beginning and it has an end. That we know. But the Most High God, he never had a beginning, never has an end. It's like trying to grasp your mind around infinity. Right? Infinity. Trying to understand infinity. Something that never stops at all, never stops, never ending. Everything in our life that we know has an end. And that's where we're accustomed to understanding. But when we try to wrap our, round, wrap our minds around uh, infinity, you begin to damn bug yourself. You're going to bug yourself out. You know, you're going to try to drive yourself crazy because um, infinity is even a, a concept that's, that's far beyond us. Because everything that we know and understand has a beginning and an end right like this video has a beginning and an end my life has a beginning and an end your life has a beginning and an end this kingdom has a beginning and the end every plant every com uh, uh, computer every everything that was made has a beginning and an end right in this life that we know of but the most high god yahweh now that has any of that he doesn't have beginning, he doesn't have an end. And infinity, in my, infinity has a, a beginning, but it doesn't have an end. So we can't even try to understand the most high God, right? I'm going to get this preset. This is the book of uh, 2 Ezra, chapter 4, and verse number 1. And the angel that was sent unto me, whose name was Uriel, gave me an answer and said, Thy heart hath gone too far in this world, and thinkest thou to comprehend the way of the most high? So um, the Lord told Ezra, hey, look, your mind has gone too far in this world. And you think to understand and comprehend the way of the Most High? Look, our mind is too too uh, far gone in this world. 
we're too carnal, all right? We're too carnal. Every every day, every second, every minute we spend in this captivity, we're just being more and more and more and more carnal, man. We're just getting more and more and more accustomed to this world, right? That's why the Lord said he had to deliver Enoch speedily, lest that wickedness should beguile his soul. In the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, all right, verses 10 on down. The most I had to get Enoch out this damn wicked, wicked world, all right? Because babies, babies that are newly born, they just came up from the uh, from the uh, heavens. They just came up from the spiritual realm. They just came from being and dwelling with the most high. That's why certain times you look at babies, they can see spirits. They can sense spirits. They'll be pointing at something and saying whatever trying to communicate that look something is there but there's nothing there you you look you look over there but there's nothing there how come that baby is sensing that something is there is because these babies have just came from the most high and they have that type of sense and that they're a little bit more in tune with the most high as they grow older they lose that All right that's why children are sometimes a little bit more in tune with the most high you see certain children they're on fire for the most high Right, they come to the truth. They're on fire. I know uh, uh Israelite. He's uh he came into the truth at five years old, and he's on fire. All right. Now he's uh ten through the spirit, and he came into the truth at five, and now he's on fire. Right, but that's just another thing. All right, so going back to the main point, we can't even start and begin to uh, comprehend the Mosai. Right, uh, verse three. Then said I, yea, Lord, yea, my Lord, and he answered. Me and said, I am not. It's like you, I am sent to show thee three ways and to set forth three similitudes before thee, whereof if thou canst declare one, me one, I will show thee also the way that thou desirest to see, and I will show thee from whence the wicked heart cometh. And I said, Tell on my Lord. Then said he unto me, Go thy way, weigh me the weight of fire, or measure me the blast of the wind, or call me again the day that is past. So we can't do those things. You can't weigh fire. What's the way to fire? Esau tries to have his own little, uh, 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 he, he thinks that he knows the way to fire when you look it up. And that's madness, right? You can't weigh fire. How does fire even have a weight? What is fire, right? What is fire? Just think about it. Yeah, you know, you can put it on your stove or you can get some uh, rocks and you kind of create that spark and you create that fire or whatever, how... However, you may create that fire, but when you look at fire in its entirety, it's it's a strange element because it's it's burning something, but it doesn't look. It looks like it's air. It looks like it's a uh, it's a um it's a air. It doesn't look like a solid, but it's literally burning everything in its path. Right. So when we even look at the Mosai's creations, and we're marveling at the Mosai's creations, even in the animal world. Right. Even in uh, human biology, you study human biology and human anatomy, you start to marvel and be like, what the hell? Right. Even the mind. Nobody can even understand the mind. Nobody even even Esau doesn't even understand the mind uh, in its entirety. So how much more the most high who created the mind? Right. Um, I'm, I'm also go to the verse. Uh. uh Right. But yeah, verse 10. I'm 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 gonna start at verse 9. Right? Right. It says uh, uh nevertheless now have I asked thee but one of the only fire and wind and of the day where it through thou hast uh passed and of things from when, uh, which thou canst not be separated, and yet canst thou give me no answer of them. So Ezra just couldn't give an answer. Like any man, you know, we can't give an answer to that. The Lord just easily confound us. He said, moreover unto me, thine own things, and such as are grown up with thee, canst thou not know. So if even the things that we grow up with, We've seen fire since a child, since a baby. We've seen fire. We've seen certain animals and we've seen certain, you know, we've seen miraculous things since our birth. But we can't even fully comprehend and understand it. Hey, check this one out. What is the, what is the color of a mirror? 
What is the color of a mirror? It doesn't have a color? Everything that we know either has total absence of color or has some type of color, except for a mirror. Because what color is a mirror? So even these things confound us, and we've grown up with them. How much more than most I, who dwells up in the heavens and we upon the earth, right? Um, I'm gonna get the. Oh well, actually, I'm gonna get another precept. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the classic, right? I'm gonna go to the classic. This is, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter fifty-five, and verse number eight. It says, "For my thoughts are not your thoughts, now that I'm your ways, my ways," saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So the Most High clearly said that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. Imagine if you were the supreme being of a certain universe. Of course, you would have a different mindset than the people that you created. If we're just looking at something, if you just know 50% of whatever, you're not going to fully understand that content. Like... If you only know half of uh, half of a movie, you only watch half of a movie. You only understand that half part. You don't understand the other part. The Mosa is looking at the whole movie in its entirety. He knows a hundred percent. He knows a hundred percent of the movie. If you have ears to hear, we're just looking at it from a not even fifty percent, twenty five, ten percent, five percent. We only know five percent of this movie. The Mosa knows a hundred percent. So how can we begin to understand the whole picture, right? Let's go to the book of uh, Romans 11 and verse 33. It's a book of Romans chapter 11 and verse 33. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. So his ways are past finding out. Paul even said, hey, his ways are past finding out, right? For who have known the mind of the Lord or who have been his counselor? So who has known the mind of the Lord? That's a rhetorical question. I mean, it's not meant to be answered. Nobody knows the mind of the Lord, right? Nobody understands and knows the, minds of the, the mind of the Lord, right? Because he's the supreme being. He doesn't have to explain himself on to us. This is a book of uh, Job chapter 33, verse uh, 12, right? This is a book of Job chapter 33, and verse uh, 12. And it reads, Behold, in this thou art not just, I will answer thee that God is greater than man. Why dost thou strive against him? For he giveth not account of any of his matters. So the Mosai doesn't give any account of his matters. Meaning he doesn't have to explain himself unto us. We're just men. We're just his creation. Right? He doesn't have to explain ourselves. His self. You know? Because he's the supreme being. And sometimes even if he wanted to explain it, we wouldn't understand it in its entirety. Because he, again, he's looking from the past, the, the present, and the future. He knows the past, he knows the present, and he knows the future. So a supreme being such as that, you can't understand him. Because he understands stuff that he, we don't even understand. He's seen things that we don't see. Right? It's the book of uh, Sirach, chapter 42. Right? This is the book of Sirach, chapter 42. And verse number 18, he seeketh out the deep in the heart and considereth their crafty devices. For the Lord knoweth all that may be known, and he beholdeth the signs of the world. So he knoweth all the things that may be known. He has all wisdom, right? He declareth the things that are past and for to come and revealeth the steps of hidden things. No thought escapeth him, neither any word is hidden from him, right? So he declares the things that are past and for to come. So he knows the past, he knows the present, and he knows the future. So a being that knows all of that can't understand it. Can't understand it. Right? And if you try to get too deep, you know, you're going to end up in a rabbit hole. You know, you're going to end up in a rabbit hole. Because certain things is just not given on to us in terms of uh, understanding. All right, let's go to the book of uh, Sirach. Hey, you know, Jay can't even understand calculus, right? Calculus. If you can't understand calculus, how are we going to understand the most high? Mind you, I took AP calculus, or advanced placement calculus. And I'm going to tell you that, I'm going to tell you this right now. I didn't understand a lot of things that was taught. 
I didn't understand a lot of things. I was, I was trying to understand it, but it, I was having a hard time trying to understand when the, because calculus is very, is a very um, deep form of math, right? It's a very deep form of math and it goes a lot. It goes over a lot of people's heads, right? And there's only a few people that can really understand and get down in it, all right? So with that in mind, if certain people can't even understand calculus, which is which is math, and it's, uh, you know, people, certain people understand it, but certain people don't. You can't even, if you can't even understand calculus, how can you understand the Mosah? He He created that. He created math. He created everything that we see and study before our eyes, all right? This is the book of Sirach, chapter 4, and verse uh, 21. Seek not out the things that are too hard for thee, neither search the things that are above thy strength. But what is commanded thee, think upon there, th think upon thereupon with reverence, for it is not needful for thee to see with thine eyes the things that are in secret. Be not curious in unnecessary matters, for more things are showed unto thee than men understand. So those three precepts are very crucial because... It says, don't seek out things that's too hard for you. I'm trying to understand the most sides too hard for us. Yeah, it's too hard. Don't just be like, oh, man. No, nah, I don't want to be weak. I want to understand it. Look, if the most I said it's too hard to understand, then it's too hard to understand. Right? You're not weak for not being able to understand the most I God Almighty. Right? So I'm, I'm going to uh, end it off with this precept. It's a book of uh, Psalms, chapter 131. Book of Psalms, chapter 131, verse 1. Yahweh, my heart is not haughty, nor mine eyes lofty. Neither do I exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me. So you don't want to bug yourself out and try to un exercise matters too hard for you. Right? And a, a, and a certain matter that is too hard for us is the most high God. All right? Because he wouldn't be feared if you fully understood what he is. And how he operates. He wouldn't be truly feared. Alright. Men fear. That. Men fear the unknown. Alright. That's why people fear death. Because they're unsure about what happens after. Everybody it has their own beliefs. The scriptures talk about it. Alright. But at the end of the day. That's why a lot of people fear death. Because they don't. They don't. They don't know. What's going to happen. After. Right. That's a lot of that's why a lot of people fear death, because it's the unknown. That's why a lot of people fear going into the ocean and down in it because they fear that which is unknown. It's not all the ocean is is a discovery. Right. That's why when, you know, you, people, they fear the unknown. Right. So the most high God, he's not completely understood there's only a few things that we know about him so that's why he's even more fear feared because we don't fully understand him right so with that all praises to yahweh ba'ashem hamashiach omalaki lord willing this video is edifying brother yasha allah shalom